Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have a good time sharing some education together. Uh, actually, I was going to answer somebody, but then I did watch some of his videos. I remember him. This guy is a poor guy, you know, like I don't want to make fun of him. He might hurt himself. So I changed the topic and uh, because, uh, you know, in one of his videos, he mentioned uh, that Muhammad, if Muhammad uh, is advising the Muslims, uh, if Muhammad, uh, Muslims today, he's saying, Muslims today, they don't insist of circumcision. And then he said, if Muhammad was not circumcised, uh, that would not make him uh, uh, from Ishmael, which means he thinks that Muhammad was circumcised. Nowhere in Islamic tradition, anywhere, it says that Muhammad ever been circumcised. However, let us leave this uh, poor guy. These days anyone can grow a beard and you know his hair go crazy and he think he is Einstein. But Einstein is only Einstein. There is no true Einstein. Um, otherwise being bald or having crazy hair doesn't make you Einstein. Uh, we hear always in Christian churches, not only between Muslims, uh, many ignorant who they say uh, that Ishmael, he is the father of the Arab. And sadly, I say ignorant because you might hear someone, he is even a priest saying that. First of all, the word Arab is not even an ethnic. The word Arab is a word mean people of the desert. Whoever lives in the desert, he is an Arab. As simple as that. In other words, it's the same as the word you use for Bedouin. So when you say Bedouin, you mean Arab. When you say Arab, you mean the Bedouin. Uh, low value maybe from your side because from my side it's very good is my voice good guys increase the value hmm. all right let us see we will check the setting sound is weak interesting okay let me check why <clears throat> This is what happened when you have four wives and you are a prophet and then your wives became 13 and 14 and you know the wives they play with the with the things you have i mean like your microphone etc i told them don't even get close there but what you can do i mean give me a second please it's not easy to be a prophet these days now the muslim they will say christian prince claim to be a prophet <laughs> uh, yeah the one who will do that is the, the best video editor mimi hijab <laughs> did you say that did you say you're a prophet <laughs> no abdul i was joking <laughs> however if muhammad can be a prophet i mean anyone can be a prophet let me prophesy some of the prophecy of your prophet uh, there's a joke about uh, Muhammad where a guy he came to him and he says my wife she is going to deliver a baby what do you think is going to be uh, Muhammad he said deliver it no? deliver and you know he did not answer then the guy he uh, his wife she delivered the baby and he came to the Prophet and he said to him, Prophet, my wife should deliver a baby. Uh, the Prophet said, it must be a boy. The guy, he said, no. The Prophet then, he said, it must be a girl. And then the Bedouin, he was amazed how the Prophet was able to find out. Now let us see how we can make the sound better. Okay, now is the sound stronger from your side? Is the sound better? I'm afraid if I make it louder, you guys might go deaf. Is it good now? Am I heard? Hello, hello. All right. Is the sound good or no? Is it so strong? Good, no? loud and clear okay so the question is is ishmael from the arab you see for me 
uh, once actually I have an argument with someone uh, is in uh, um, Middle Eastern Christian and you know we grow in the Middle East and we hear things and you know we go to school and you know we are like we don't want to use the word brainwash but it's somehow it is like this because we grow up in a society and we take for granted what we hear nobody want to go study investigate uh, I before I start actually uh, I, I decide to show an article written by a bishop an Aramaic bishop who speak Ar uh, Aramaic fluently and this is his language actually he's an Aramaic bishop uh, let me see if I can put the image for you here the article give me a second please uh, now the article in Arabic but doesn't matter really we can share the link and you can use Google translation from your side. And you can search actually the article yourself and you can read it. Now, I am not trying to prove my point from an article, but those people, they don't say things unless it is accurate. Uh, here, American Foundation for Syriac Studies. And in order to be teaching in such an organization, you have to be the top. And the guy is a bishop for millions of people. Uh, you go there and you will see where he is explaining the word Arab and Arobo. Let me zoom in. It says here, Al Arab Kalima Samiya Qadima Ma'naha Sukkanu Sahra Awul Bayda. The word Arab mean it's a, it's a, 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 a you know from the Sami uh, origin from Sam and from the language of Sam and mean the inhabitants of the desert or um, uh, you know Baida is like you know there's a desert and there is the 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 one it's in the way to be a desert or you are getting closer to the desert as get like uh, you will see some green but it's not desert yet. So those people who live in those places, they call them Arab. It is not a nation. Whoever live in the desert, he is an Arab. All right. So, uh, and you know, all the origin of of the uh, of the word is not even Arabic, <laughs> which is funny. I mean, it's not even the Arab who call themselves Arab. I mean, those who live in the desert, it was the Aramaic people. And here you see uh, how funny it is that now today you have a name people use and you call yourself. But in fact, the one who gave you the name, it was not uh, you. It was the Aramaic. Now, the word Arab, by the way, is not only mean or doesn't mean only people who live in the desert. It means people who they are savage. So it's kind of like a... If somebody he did not take a shower for long, you know, like eh, he's a Bedouin, you know. So this is Arab. Uh, it can be used even for someone who is not an Arab as as a way to describe his situation. Let us say. Uh, and here he's explaining to us how the words came to 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 the existence today. All right. Uh, you can search. Uh, actually, I'm going to post the link for you guys. Give me a second. Uh, let me copy the link. I will post it for you in the chat so you guys can use Google translation from your side and you can uh, Translate Someone saying lose with Nini our friend this Nini is an idiot. He don't even have high school Bring me somebody, you know uh, When I talked to him we were in the chat room and he agreed that your prophet have boom boom with the goat I mean, what are you talking about? Boom, boom with the goat. He agree. Go, go and watch the you know the conversation between me and him. And the Muslims then they they, they were making fun of him, attacking him badly for what he did. So you are an idiot. And actually, I, I think it is you who is mentioning his name because his name nobody mentioned except himself. Now, so here in in uh, in this in this study is showing us where the word Arab is coming from. Have nothing to do with a nation. Arab are not a nation. It's a mix of people who they are. Actually, even if you go and search uh, in the Hebrew, you will you will find the word Arab uh, uh, mean mix, the mix, the mingle. You know, the one is mixed. 
it's not the one who they are pure you know pure in which way uh, we are losing internet very good uh oh all right i hope we are not going to lose the internet let me see Ah, this is what happened. My internet. I hope we are back. Okay, I think now we are back. So, uh, even if you search in the Hebrew, you will find what I'm talking about. However, still this is, might be not convincing for some people because they are arrogant and they don't want to listen. Right? If you don't want to listen, then nobody can convince you of anything. Uh, but this is the origin of the language, and this is what uh, you know what what the rea reality is. Like as an example, Aramaic, it was a title or a word given. You know where you live, where you live, it's where you being where you will be called. As an example, Aramaic is the children of Aram, and Aram or Aramaic is is a name of those who live in a high land. As you see, so the Aramaic are people who live in the highland, and uh, the Arab are people who they are mixed, many ethnic groups. They live in the desert, and they are desert people. Now, let us see here some reference from the Bible. You know, always the Muslims, they try to show you things, you know, they claim that Muhammad is from Ishmael, but if there is anywhere in the Quran it says that? Nowhere. How come? You see, how come the Quran, as an example, mentioned, like as an example, chapter 29, verse number 27, that Allah, he gave Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and from his seeds, the prophethood. Okay, why Allah mentioned? Because if this is the book made by Allah, so the one is talking here is Allah, right? Which is, we know it's Muhammad. So why Muhammad here, he dropped Ishmael? If Muhammad claiming to be from Ishmael, shouldn't Muhammad mention the first, the, the eldest in the family? How in the world you drop the most important child? For he is the older or the elder. You see, even in the Middle East today, they call you the father. You, if you go to Muslim chat room, everybody is Abu, 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 Abu. Abu means father of. So the first child you have is going to be your name, even the name of the guy. They will call him Abu. Let us say you have a child. His name is Yasser Qadri. The father of Yasser Qadri. If Yasser is the older in the family, they will call his father Abu Yasser. So Ibrahim, based in the Middle Eastern tradition, he should be the father of Ishmael, not the father of Isaac. I mean, as a name. Because Ishmael is the elder. So look what happened here. The Quran skip Ishmael and mention Isaac, Isaac and Jacob. And then after mentioning those two names, says from his seeds will be the prophethood. Where is Ishmael? You know what I mean? From the seed of Abraham, what the Quran chose to mention? Two names. Where is the third? The Muslim they will say, will Ishmael mention later? But this verse says, from the seed of Abraham, and mention two names, not the three names, from those seeds will be the prophethood, according to the verse, chapter 29, verse 27. Yet the Muslims will not accept. They will say, this is not enough proof. Okay, let's go to Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih al-Bukhari is a Muslim book, and Muslims will say, now what? They will say, uh, Sahih al-Bukhari made by a Christian prince, made by the Jews, Look what it says. This is the Muslims reporting the story, and according to Muhammad himself, it's not us, it's not me, you know. Those are story narrated from Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, who Muhammad, you know, named him as the scholar of the nation, right? And then you will see that it's Muhammad who mentioned those stories, and they are copying from Muhammad what he said. The Prophet said, this is the source of tradition of working people between between uh, them, as-Safa and Marwa. And here Muhammad is speaking about fabrication, about 
the wife of Abraham, which is Hajar, and the wife and 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 her son. And look what happened here. Muhammad he confirmed, and his followers they confirmed that Ishmael he do not know Arabic. Read carefully. So they settled there, and later on on they sent for their family who come to settle with them. So this uh, some families become permanent residents there. The child, i.e. Ishmael, grew up and learned Arabic from them. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid statement after this? Somebody will say to you that Ishmael is an Arab. He is the father of the Arab, but he learned Arabic from the Arab. Do you see it? Imagine I go to Indonesia and I am 11 years old. And then I learn Indonesian from the Indonesian, from the Indonesian, and then I am the father of the Indonesian. <laughs> you know what I mean? So even their books proving that this statement or this this theory is a joke. Is you know Muhammad is a fraud. All his what he's trying to do, he wanted to try to get some legitimacy to be uh, uh, from Abraham. Like I am not from the middle of nowhere. I am from Abraham. Like hello. But it's obvious that this is stupid. I mean, the guy, uh, I'll go to Germany now. I stay there for six months. I learn German. And then I am the father of the German. But the German are already there. And I'm, I'm learned their language from them, which means there's a nation. There is a language established. There's people who speak such a language. And then I go there and I learn Arabic. And then I became their father. All right. Uh, so it's very silly and very stupid argument when they say such a statement and actually you can see more reference in my books about uh, Ishmael being the father of the Arab and here in the same time you know if I am from Ishmael does that make me a prophet uh, no I mean do we inherit prophecy I mean <laughs> if my father is a prophet I would be a prophet too no it's about God, you know, he chose people like, you know, not from everyone from Israel, he became prophet. There's chosen people by God who they became prophet, regardless who they are, their fathers. But they are from the children of Israel. Muhammad is not from the children of Israel and Muhammad is not from Abraham for sure. Number two, uh, Ishmael, he did marry an Egyptian woman. Let me find some reference. All right. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 21, verse number 21. Very easy to remember, 21, 21. You will see here that he settled Ishmael in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother arranged for him to marry a woman from the land of Egypt. So look what happened now. Ishmael, his father, is an Aramaic man coming all the way from Iraq. His mother is Egyptian. The wife of Ishmael is Egyptian too. So how he became the father of the Arab? <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you see what uh, this, do you see what I'm talking about? So now we have more confirmation that there's no way even he did not even he had nothing to do with the Arab. Even though, by the way, the word Arab mean people who live in the desert doesn't mean an ethnic, as I say. But if we claim, if we if we say, okay, they are ethnic, somehow they became ethnic. But even, I mean, why why the Jews? I mean, before long before Muhammad exists, so the book of Genesis is written way before before Muhammad even was in the belly of his mother. Why the Jews want to write such a thing? If I mean, why why they want to lie about it? You know what I mean? So. He married an Egyptian woman, and there is then now the, all the options of having children who they are Arab is gone. The Arab himself, Muhammad himself, the Sahih Hadith confirm that Ishmael, he learned Arabic from the Arab. And if you marry from the Arab, even if you marry from the Arab, does not make your children Arab. The, the children will follow their father. You know what I mean? As an example, Moses himself, he married a, a Bedouin woman. Bedouin from the desert doesn't make the you know we can say they are Arab like as Bedouin you know we remember that 
the word Arab mean people of the desert. So, but doesn't mean that children of Musa are Arab. Otherwise, we will say Musa's are children are Arab too. So this is a very silly argument. But as you see, even the Bible confirm that uh, Ishmael he did marry from an Egyptian woman. Then, if we go, we will find more more reference in Genesis twenty. Uh, Eight, verse number nine you will notice that uh, Ishmael, Ishmael he lived very close to his brothers to the point they are marrying from his daughter as an example if he is living far away they will not even know that he have a daughter you know we are not living in the 20th century where you can take a plane and you go there or people speak in the internet if, Muhammad, if Ishmael was living in Mecca, it's going to take them maybe a month or so before they can arrive there. And then if we go to more verses in the Bible, we will see Genesis chapter 25, verse number 10. We will find uh, that Abraham, uh, this is about the barrier of Sarah where Sarah was located. Here you will see the death of Abraham. His son Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave. So Ishmael and Isaac, they were in the barrier, in, in, the, in, the, in the funeral of Abraham. Think about it. If Ishmael was living in Mecca, and then in order for the news to come to Ishmael, it needed a month to come to him. And then he needed another month to come and attend the funeral. <laughs> but he was in the funeral. You know what I mean? That's mean Ishmael, he don't live far away. Maybe a day or two from where Abraham he lived. Uh, remember, I mean, at that time, they cannot, live a, uh, they cannot let a dead person stay for long, for he will smell bad, and you know, things will go really wrong. They have to bury him as fast as possible. So when we say that his sons, Isaac and Ishmael, they buried him, that's mean they are there. And that's mean Ishmael is very close. So how that can be that he was in Mecca? Mecca is like 1,200 mile, I think, maybe like 1,400 kilometer from where Abraham was. You know what I mean? So in order for Ishmael to take a camel or a donkey or whatever, if you want to cross the desert, you have to take a camel. The donkey cannot survive it. Uh, even a horse will, will, you know, you have to take a lot of water with you. There's no water in the way. Uh, so if you take a camel, you know, how long is going to take the, the camel to be, to be there? So all those things, you know, I mean, there's tons of, uh, we can share endless reference about uh, Ishmael, where Ishmael, he lived. Uh, you know, Ishmael, according to the Bible, there's many places where it's, uh, you know, shown us uh, where, uh, where Ishmael, uh, you know, literally he lived. Uh, let me see if I can find a map. Give me a second. Actually, the map, uh, it was open. I closed it. Okay, let us see where we can find the map. All right, this is the wilderness of Paran. I mean, it's far away from Mecca. This is in Sinai. And the brothers of Ishmael, they were living around. They were living in that area. So they are not far really from each other. Somebody will say that the Bible says uh, uh, that children of Ishmael, they will be a great nation. My friend, a great nation does not mean, uh, you know, I mean, uh, the Bible mentioned many, even small number of nations, they will be great nation. Great nation is about, there is something great about them. Let us say something, uh, not necessarily great as good, it can be great as uh, influence. But in the case of Ishmael, nothing bad about Ishmael actually, and some people think, that when the Bible says that Ishmael will be a wild man, 
that's mean those are the Muslims and the Muslims look at them they you know first of all Muslims 95% of them are not even Arab they are not you know the Arab is a very small tiny minority between the Muslims uh, secondly the Arab themselves they are not Arab which means they are not really one ethnic they are a mix of, uh, of uh, uh, let me see let me see if I can do that hold on Give me a second. <clears throat> you know, we try always uh, to make uh, our statement facts, not just talk. Talk is cheap, right? Let us see. Okay. All right. Let us look here. The word Arab, what the word Arab mean in the Hebrew language? Do you see how the word come? Mix mingles mix together mingle self mix aramic cons uh, corresponding to arab to mingle mingle self mix all right so uh, uh, it's a mix uh, the arab are mixed people you know and uh, there is people who they have uh, very I mean, if you look, if you look at the people of Yemen who claim to be uh, Arab, they have nothing to do as a look with the people who live in Saudi Arabia. People of Yemen, they are short. Most of the Bedouin, they are taller, way taller. People of Yemen, they have a totally different character. And people, actually, if I show you a picture of those who supposedly are called Arab today, give me a second. You will find that they have nothing, nothing to do with each other. So. As an example, the king of Jordan, he claimed to be an Arab, supposedly, and he's from Mecca, right? What, what about this guy? He have a blue eyes. <laughs> Anyway, let us see. I'm trying just to find a picture, like a little bit a clear picture. Uh, I'm searching, just give me a second. There's many pictures, but none of them are you know, close to the face, so we can see the difference. Let us see this picture here. This is the king of Jordan, and those are next to him, they are Saudi. Anyone notice anything as they share? Nothing. <laughs> now, somebody will say to you, well, the king of Jordan, his mother, she is a, a, a bridge. Doesn't matter anyway. You know, people of Jordan look different. The more they are, you know, I mean, Saudi, they look different. They are taller, they are skinnier. They have different build. And not all Saudi are the same, you know, depending on the location, which, which territory you live in. Every territory have different look, have different even accent. And even Muhammad, he mentioned that uh, his people will not be capable to read the Quran in one letter, if you remember. Why? <laughs> because those are mixed. They are not Arab. You know, there's nothing called really Arab. Each one of them have his own potato language. So, uh, let us see here. This is the uh, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, and later he will be the king. 
and the other one is a ruler from uh, uh, from Emirate. Now, you look at them, maybe both they are dressing like Arab, but I mean, as Bedouin people, but they have totally different look. Their eyes is different, their nose is different, their mouth is different, everything about, even their build is different, everything about them is different. So, you can tell they are totally different people. Let us see another one. This is the Prince of Qatar. The second you look at him, you will find yourself looking at someone from Pakistan. Because simply he is. All those people there, most of them, they are coming from India, Pakistan specifically. Let us get a close look. Give me a second. All right. This is the father. If you see him, he is not wearing Arabian clothes. If you see him in the street in Pakistan, are you going to recognize him that he is not a Pakistani person? No way. It's impossible. All right? All those people, they are coming from, because they are, you know, uh, Pakistan is very close, by the way. It's just, uh, you know, like a few hours by by, by the boat, you will be there. Uh, it's, it's almost close, across the border. Uh, their, their, even their tradition, their food, their, uh, look, this is, the, this is the Prince of Qatar right now. Isn't it, this is a guy from Pakistan? So how those Arab, they look different. I mean, each one of them is coming from different galaxy why they are not looking the same you know what i mean if when we say arab we are talking about ethnic group if this ethnic group let us say uh, mixed and the majority of it is not from that group no more then we cannot call them by that group anymore uh, let us show you another one Okay, look at this one. I mean, what does this guy have to do with the Arab? Anyone have an idea? He have a blue eyes. He's blonde. You know, if, if this guy, he walk in Europe, you would think he is European like everybody. Right? Okay, how this person became an Arab? Look at his wife. Okay, how this wife is an Arab? You, you know what I mean? So what does Arab mean exactly? I mean, when they say Arab, it's a, it's a joke. There's nothing it's called. Like when I say Arab, I mean that originally we are people coming from certain area as desert, but it's a mixed area with many ethnic, nobody knows actually who they are, where they're coming from. It's a big mix. Egyptian are not Arab. This guy is Syrian, is not an Arab. Uh, uh, the king of Morocco isn't Arab. They are Moroccan. They are African. What how, what make them Arab? You know, imagine, even the Muslim confirm that four thousand Muslims occupied Egypt. At that time, there was four million Egyptian. You believe it? Uh, somebody will say, how four thousand can occupy four million? Those Egyptian, they are farmers. They are not warriors, and they were controlled by you know a little number of Roman for centuries. And the Egyptian give up. Nobody can fight the Roman. And they have no power to fight them. They have no army. They have no leader. They have nothing. The Muslims came. So the 4,000 Arab, they make the whole Egyptian, the 4 million Arab. It's impossible. But this is what happened always. Islam come. Everybody want to attach himself to the one who is victorious. Who is the victorious? The Arab. So it's better for you to say, I'm an Arab. 
Otherwise, you will be not an Arab, and then people will make fun of you. You will not be first-class citizen. And this is why Arab became, it's like saying, I am a superior, I'm an Arab. When, when Osama bin Laden, he went to Pakistan, and he went to Afghanistan, he, right away he became a leader. Why? He's an Arab, and he's coming from Saudi Arabia. That alone is, is, a, is a big deal. He's not a Pakistani, he's not an Afghani, he's an Arab. It's a big shot for them. This is why if you, if you go to Indonesia, when they got a sheikh, he's coming from any, uh, what they call it, Arab countries, like he's like a superstar there. He's an Arab. You know what I mean? Like a big, big shot. Uh, so that made many people, they, you know, they try to make themselves join such a name, even though this name does not have nothing to do with any ethnic even the Arab themselves, as I said, they are not even an ethnic. Same for Muhammad. Muhammad in the beginning, the Arab, they were just Bedouin. They have nothing really to be proud about. So Muhammad, what he can be proud about? Nothing. So he decided to join the one who they are the most honorable. Who are they? Abraham, Isaac. You know what I mean? When you don't have a family, you try to find one. If you don't have, you know, you want to claim to be a king, Okay, you are the son of who? You want to be a prince? Who is your father? Which king? So Muhammad was desperate trying to find a person he belonged to so he can claim something he don't have. And that was Abraham. It was a solution. All right? So Abraham was a solution for Muhammad, not a true inheritance or let us say lineage. And as you see, even the Muslims, even Muhammad himself in his story, he mentioned that Abraham, when he had his son Ishmael, he went to Arabia, according to Muhammad, and to Mecca, according to Muhammad, and there was nobody there, according to Muhammad. But here we go, we find that he went there and he found the Arab there. And actually, according to Islamic history, if you find my book, if you read my book, you will find that he married from the tribe of Jerham. And, uh, you know, Jerham is the enemy of Muhammad, how he became the father of them. So all this fabrication is just to give Muhammad some papers. Papers, who is your father? Actually, I believe Muhammad, nobody knows who is really his father. For me, I'm just guessing. I think it was Waraq ibn Nawfal. You know, if you have my book, you will see that when Muhammad's father, supposedly the one Muslim claimed that he's the father of Muhammad, he was going to have sex with the, uh, 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 with the mother of Muhammad, uh, uh, the sister of Waraka, she offered Muhammad father 100 camel to sleep with her. Now, the story here is very fishy. I mean, 100 camel to sleep with her? Secondly, that means Muhammad's father was a, a, jig, a jigalo guy, you know, like you get paid for sex. So, when the Muslim they mention those stories in their books, that Waraq ibn Nawfal's sister, she offered 100 camel when he was going to have sex with the mother of Muhammad. And then Muhammad's father, after he finished with the mother of Muhammad, he came to her, she said to him, I do not need you no more. She changed her mind. So it looked like she was sent by her brother Waraka trying to convince him to stay away from this woman by offering money. And when he did not stay away, the offer is gone. No more money, no more camels. And imagine 100 camels in that time is a lot of money. I mean, it's now it's a lot of money. So imagine at that time, that will make you, make you really rich. Uh, same time, Islamic books prove that Muhammad was born four years after his father's death, which is very stupid even to, to mention that this guy, he is, uh, his name is Abdullah, and he is the father of Muhammad. And Abdullah, he died, and then his wife, four years after, she gave birth to a son. You see, the father and the son both, they have, they have, they, supposedly they have sex with two women in the same night. So, when we say, when we see the Muslim, they say that uh, Muhammad and his uncle, they are the fruit of sexual relationship in one night. 
So how Muhammad was born four years if Muhammad's father was dead three months after? So to make it simple, let us say there's two guys. They have sex with two women in this night. And then one of them, he died after three months. Or let us say six months. And then after four years, the one who died, his, the woman he slept with, she gave birth. That is Muhammad. See? So everything is against Muhammad. We don't know who is Muhammad. When the Muslim even they say that Muhammad, his father, his name is Abdullah. How his name is Abdullah, but he don't believe in Allah. How his name is Abdullah, but he will go to hell. You know what I mean? If the guy, his name is Abdullah, why he is going to go to hell? Slave of Allah. Right? Muhammad, he confirmed that his father is in fire. So, what I believe that the real name of Muhammad is unknown. In the Middle East, if somebody is unknown, we say Abdullah Fulan, which means uh, uh, unknown slave of Allah. Unknown person. Abdullah is a name, is a title. You give it to somebody, is it supposedly unknown as a person? We don't know. All right? I ask, a man ask, where is my father? Messenger of Allah said, your father in hell. When he turned his back, he said, my father and your father in hell. <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> uh, 